There's another beta out for Ecamm Live version 4, just a couple of days after that massive update that we've uh, just had. And there are a couple of new features and there are some tweaks and improvements as well. So I'll cover those all in this video. And there's also a couple of things that I neglected to mention in the larger video that I did all about the, uh, the main Ecamm version 4 uh, beta update that came out, as I say, just a couple of days ago. So let's get straight on into the new features. Uh, and I'll start with one that I'm very happy about because they added a new feature in uh, the beta a couple of days ago, which was this countdown that we now have on the record. So when I click on record, if you are in record only mode, then it's basically going to count down as you can see on the record button. Uh, if I actually click on it in the right place, there we go. <laughs> Three, two, one, and it counts down and then the recording starts. So this is a feature that a lot of people asked for. So it's great that they added that in. However, some people, me included, uh, weren't entirely uh, happy about having to be forced into that because it just didn't work for some people's workflow and by some people. I mean me. Um, but in any case, they have now added that as a, um, a toggle. So you can choose whether to have that or not. So if you come into your preferences, Ecamm Live preferences, then you'll see under the general tab at the bottom there, we've got this record only countdown. It will be on as a default. So there's to you know highlight the new feature, uh, but you can always come in here and toggle it off if you'd prefer it just the way uh, things were before where it just goes straight into the recording. Uh, so that's the first thing. The next thing is related to uh, comments and reactions. Um, so so they've now added little badges next to the uh, chat comments in the comments and reactions window uh, that basically shows, uh, first of all, if somebody is a moderator, you'll see a little wrench symbol next to them. Uh, and if somebody is a channel member as well, you'll see a little badge next to them as well. So that's nice to be able to sort of uh, highlight anybody who is a channel member uh, within your chat. Uh, one thing that they've uh, sort of revoked actually in this uh, this release of the beta is this feature whereby if comments were deleted in the chat by moderators on uh, the platform itself, that they'd be deleted in here. So that is, has now uh, been removed as a feature for the time being. Uh, whether that will be coming back, what the issue with that was, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, no doubt it's just because they need to uh, uh, do some tweaks to improve the uh, functionality or something like that. Uh, the other thing that has been uh, tweaked is that uh, super chats would be displayed as super chats previously, uh, whereas there was some issue perhaps with uh, super stickers. So now the uh, need note is that super stickers will now appear as well as supers in the uh, in the chat as well. Uh, another thing was that apparently the view count occasionally would uh, display zero. So that's been uh, just a minor little tweak there. Um, and then also related to uh, live streaming still, uh, when you are scheduling a live stream, then if you are scheduling to Twitter, then it will take the title of the live stream and post that uh, as opposed to it looks like before it was taking the description, which obviously would have been too long in instances. So presumably it was getting truncated or something like that. Um, also, another little tweak is that the YouTube and Twitter latency drop downs that we have in when uh, scheduling a live stream, uh, those were uh, not being remembered from uh, one uh, state to another. Uh, so now it's actually remembering those latency states. So if I just come back and show you what I'm talking about here, if I go into uh, here and I'll select a stream and then I'm going to schedule a stream in here. So here we've got this uh, platform latency. So you can come in here and select low, medium, uh, and so on, or low, normal, and ultra low. Uh, same for Twitter, if I was to add Twitter in here. Um, so now it is remembering those states, apparently before it wasn't. One other thing, by the way, that I don't think I mentioned in my previous update was that um, when you are scheduling a stream, uh, you can obviously enter all of the details in here. It may not be immediately obvious, but when you are selecting whether you want it listed or unlisted uh, private, you actually do that by clicking in here. So this little drop down here is where you're going to choose whether you want it to be a public, uh, unlisted or private stream. So that's all done uh, from within there. Um, another thing related to uh, live streaming is actually when you're adding a Facebook page and there has been some issues that people have been having with this, but it's actually a Facebook issue. Uh, isn't that always the way? Um, if I come over here and I go to uh, destinations, uh, when you click on new destination and you want to go and add a Facebook business page, it's not actually showing up on here just at the moment, but the, uh, <laughs> the little pop-up isn't showing up um, for you, but it's showing up for me. Uh, when you go to add a new Facebook page, if you've 
encountered this issue, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, where you, you log into your account, and then for some reason, your main Facebook page that you've been using all the time and you've been using with Ecamm isn't showing up in your list of available pages. This is related to the uh, new feature that Facebook <laughs> added, um, whereby you can easily, quickly switch between your uh, Facebook page profile and your personal Facebook profile. Uh, and it's almost sort of detached your Facebook page from your profile now. Uh, and so there is a bit of a workaround for it. But what I'll do is I'll leave a link to the Ecamm Live support article um, that uh, that they've created to explain how to fix this. Basically, uh, to cut a long story short, you have to go in and grant someone else permission to be an admin on your Facebook page to then grant you yourself access back as an admin on the page and then you'll be able to add it in. So if you're wondering why your Facebook page isn't showing up in the picker in Ecamm, um, that's the reason. And I'll, as I say, I'll leave a link to the uh, to the article in there. Um, so that's about it in terms of the sort of main updates. But as I say, there was a couple of things that I wanted to just uh, cover off as well uh, in terms of a couple of things that I missed before. I also just want to touch on the uh, the topic of isolated video because um, there's been a few people asking about isolated video and uh, wasn't it supposed to be in version four? Well, the fact is, um, although it was mentioned in a Q&A that it was something that was being worked on uh, and may make it into version four, just bear in mind that this is only like, you know, two days into the beta program. So uh, there may well be more features and things like that that get added to this. In fact, there usually are with these betas. Um, so uh, just because something doesn't happen to be in this particular beta doesn't mean that it isn't still being worked on and isn't going to be in a future update. Um, there again, you know, things that are in the betas can sometimes get pulled even from the updates as well. So that's the the whole point of a beta is that it is to test these things out before they go sort of prime time. And that's another thing to point out. Obviously, in this particular release, we've had a number of different bug fixes. So that's because it is the first beta or the first few betas of a major uh, update. Uh, and so there will be little bugs and things like that to iron out. Uh, and so just bear that in mind. And if you've got the most important live stream of your life coming up, um, then the advice would be to uh, to use the regular version rather than the beta just now. Don't just take this as, you know, it's, it's going to be 100% bulletproof because uh, that's not always the case. I tend to just always use the beta because I like to live dangerously. <laughs> but uh, it's just something to note there that, uh, you know, if something doesn't, if something goes wrong, then that's the whole point. Let the guys know, let the team know at Ecamm that you've had an issue and what it is. Is. And as you can see, they're very proactive about uh, pushing out these updates and uh, getting these things fixed. Uh, so with that said, uh, a couple of things that I missed off the uh, the previous video, which were in the sort of first public release of the beta, beta 3 that was. Um, uh, first of all, there is now a higher bit rate on uh, video recording. So this is just something that they've improved. There's no toggle or anything like that. It just naturally is a higher bit rate. I should probably know what that is, but I can't remember exactly what the figure is. But it's anyway, it's better than it was before. Just take that. Uh, the other thing that is not a feature that was mentioned. Now, let me show you this. It was actually India Delgado who, uh, who found this or noticed this. And let's have a look. If I come into my uh, live demo mode, uh, I'm really pleased about this. So here I've got my Ecamm Live uh, main window. Uh, and previously, we used to be able to enlarge it, but it was sort of limited to how big we can enlarge it. Well, now, basically, you can just make it as big as you want. I mean, this is a 43-inch uh, 4K display, uh, and I can just make that really big. Obviously, you might not want to have it that big whilst you are uh, you know, recording or live streaming or whatever, um, but it is nice that you can uh, do that, especially when you're doing things like laying out and so on or uh, arranging things on the screen. It's nice to be able to have it as a sort of larger... Um, uh, larger view on the screen. So I do like that. Not a listed feature as such, but for me, that is a real bonus to have that. Uh, the next thing, though, is uh, something that uh, I mentioned about the update to the uh, the markers that we've got now. So chapter markers when we are recording. Uh, and just to uh, clarify where that is exactly, if you come into here and we go into recording, uh, you've now, when you are recording, you've got the option to add a marker. Uh, and that would be either a just a timestamp, this is, I mean, so if I come into here and click on record and I start recording, uh, then you've got one of uh, two options. You can either add a marker like this and it will add a timestamp 
or you can add a marker with info. And what that does is pops up this box and I can add in a, let me say, I give this the name chapter like this and add it. Uh, and what that's gonna do is create a list of timestamps. So this is what you do in YouTube to add in your chapter markers and things like this. Um, and uh, the thing that I mentioned at the time about this was that, uh, you know, this one way you're adding the info is not something you could do necessarily live on the fly as it were, uh, because you'd have to be obviously typing while you're recording or live streaming. But they did actually add in a stream deck button and I kind of missed it in the uh, the version three. I was looking at the version two beta. Um, so the version three, they'd uh, snuck in this new little button. So let's have a look at how this works because uh, this is actually really cool. Uh, so if you look in the stream deck actions list, um, if I uh, scroll down instead of moving the window, um, right down here we, at the bottom, we've got this one to switch profile. Uh, not switch profile. <laughs> That's a bit stupid, isn't it? To add marker is not at the bottom, it's here. Add marker. <laughs> Um, now, what you can do with this, though, is if you just leave the button as it is, then when you press the button, it's just going to create this uh, this timestamp, this um, just the, uh, you know, the time that you are into the recording. However, what you can do here is you can actually add in uh, the marker text. So what this means is if you've got a, a series, you know, a video that you're doing with a series of chapters that you want in it and you know what those are going to be in advance, uh, you could literally just create the markers with the chapter names, uh, you know, as a row of Stream Deck buttons. And then as you are going through the um, uh, through the recording or the live stream or whatever, you could just be pressing these buttons to trigger those particular chapter markers. And in that way, you would then have a, uh, you know, at the end of it, a full list of all of your chapter markers all done all ready to go, all ready to upload into uh, into YouTube or copy and paste into YouTube or whatever. Uh, and by the way, these chapter markers, they just come out, as I mentioned in the previous video, as a, uh, a text file. So you just get a text file with all of these uh, things in it. So um, I hope you've found that useful and I'll leave a link over here to uh, check out some of my other uh, Ecamm Live videos as well.